And as I said last week, this week, and indeed next week, we will be doing Rescue Animal of the Week. So let's do it now. <laughs> It's Cardi P's Rescue Animal of the Week. It is indeed the Rescue Animal of the Week. Hashtag Adopt Own Shop. Uh, these are rescue animals. These are animals that have been adopted from shelters. We're doing that uh, on the Sunday show last week, this week, and next week. We're going to try it out, see if it works. Uh, Dave. And who is the Rescue Animal of the Week? Rescue Animal of the Week this week is Delilah, who's a Chihuahua, uh, who was nominated by uh, dog mum Jill Padgett, uh, who emailed us and said, Hi Talk TV, uh, we can't seem to text you, so she emailed us instead. <laughs> we, we, we don't need that information, but thank you anyway. Which was That's hilarious, because yes. uh, it went to our, our feedback team and didn't know what to do with it. Anyway, we, we got uh, there anyway, in the end. We got there in the end. Uh, yes. This is my entry for best rescued pet. Delilah, aged five, was rescued a year ago from a Chihuahua Rescue UK. Uh, apparently she's a bit of a feisty diva. Jill or Delilah? Both. Both, both. Okay, right, okay. I lo uh, Jill says she loves her to bits and she's from Starport. Yes. Lovely. Well, we Isn't can see Delilah? Uh, Delilah on the screen. She looks very, very beautiful. And uh, as I say, as with Cat of the Week, I will tweet it out after the programme, uh, Dave will uh, we'll WhatsApp it to me, won't you? And then I will, I will I put it on my, so. my Twitter. Uh, at, at I Peter. have made, the, made it. It's OK. I would email it to you. Excellent. Well, thank you very, very much indeed. Um, I had an interesting night last night, Dave. Uh, Did you? To tell you about. Yes. Ooh. So there's a lovely chap uh, called Spike who is a beef eater, and uh, Spike Abbott, and he um, got in touch with me mm. and says he likes talk TV. It was very nice of him. And he invited me and uh, my mother has been staying with me the mm -hmm. last few days, to the Tower of London. Over and there. just, just yeah, as we can see it out the window, actually, we can it from Talk TV Towers. There is me on the screen with Spike. You can see it on my Twitter as well. And Spike, legs. Spike and his, on my legs. Um, yes. yes, so um, Jenny and Milton Keynes, you, you have, you, you've got your wish. Uh, there is a picture of me in my, with my legs. But more, um, more importantly, uh, Spike Why is there. Why were you there? Why was I there? Because Spike invited me. And there's this thing I didn't know about, but it's called the Ceremony of the Keys. And right. it's done every single day, every single day, at seven minutes to ten. And the Ceremony of the Keys has been at night. And the Ceremony of the Keys, which is just sort of handling, basically locking up the Tower of London, has been done every night for the last 732 years in almost exactly the same way. Oh, wow. It was amazing. It's never been filmed. It's never been uh, sort of photographed or anything. You're not allowed to use your... your uh, no photography is allowed. Mm -hmm. And you've got beef eaters involved. You've got... Uh, you've got um, the guys with the Busbies involved as well. It was really, it was absolutely fascinating. And we went last night uh, just before 10 o'clock. Uh, apparently there's a one-year waiting list Good to actually grief. go there. Yeah, no, loads of people want to do it, loads of tourists and so on. Mm -hmm. But Spike very kindly invited me. I didn't have to wait a year. And it was just fascinating to see all that goes on at the Tower of London and the, the work that they do. And actually, to be a beef eater, I didn't know, there's so much I didn't know. Actually, we should get Spike on the programme. Yeah, I was going to say, he's yeah. not that far he's away. He's not that far he's away. Let's, let's get him on, actually, to talk about this, because um, he's 22 years in the RAF, or at least 22 years in, in mm -hmm. the services. He's been in the RAF. Um, he's flown Tony Blair and done all sorts of things. He was, he was a pilot. And uh, now he's got this amazing job as a beef eater. It's oh, incredible. Wow. Yeah. So do they do an unlocking... I mean, they obviously lock well, up. They every sort night. of hand over the keys, and then yes, they they open it in the morning. But I don't think it's a, I don't think it's a ceremony per se. But no, the ceremony of the keys. It's incredible. It's really really interesting. And I, I just didn't know it was Spike a thing. In in this chair, we need Spike in here. We need yeah. Spike in here. in his in his ceremonial uh, outfit as well. He's also a beadle. Do you know what a beadle is? A beadle. Yeah. Well, so, like Jeremy Beadle. Not like Jeremy oh. Beadle. No, no. Um, I did ask. There are apparently uh, over thirty beadles. They are. Um, it's to do with aldermen in the city of London. It's another ancient role. And uh, Spike is also a beadle. And I said, please tell me this one of the Beatles is called Jeremy, but apparently they're not. So there we are. Anyway, let, yeah, let's get Spike in the studio. Let's yes. do that. Because that was great. He wanted a tour of Talk TV as well. He's a big fan. And apparently some of the beef eaters down there at the Tower of London do watch uh, Talk TV and listen to Talk Radio. So thank you for your support. And uh, it was very, very kind of him to, uh, yeah. to, to do that. Um, now, uh, I want to talk about another, <laughs> another article uh, that I read this week. This is uh, Confessions of a Lego Addict. And this was someone who was talking about his obsession with Lego and how there are documentaries, indeed, about life at the heart of Lego in Denmark. It's an astonishingly powerful brand that his growth has been extraordinary to watch. Uh, it used to be just like Meccano or Fisher Technic or whatever, but it is supreme operating profits from the first half of the year, uh, although have fell, fallen over 20%. Apparently, the cost of raw materials is something affecting Lego. But um, it, is, it is fascinating. I know you're a Lego addict, as is Grant Imler, who is a Lego 
expert. Uh, it is globally successful, incredible, incredibly famous brand. Grant, you are very welcome to uh, Talk TV. And I was astonished to hear from Tech Up Dave earlier that um, apparently the biggest manufacturer of tyres in the world is Lego. Uh, I mean, it, it, it's just sort of an incredible brand, isn't it, Grant? Yeah, no, Lego has become something that is unparalleled, I think, in the toy industry. Um, I mean, it has probably one of the biggest possible um, backings and just in general has to be one of the biggest companies, I think, out there in the toy market. Uh, oh. They just released the BTS Lego set recently and it has, I think, broken almost every single record that Lego has had previously. What's BTS? What does that sound for? Uh, beyond the Scene. It's a Korean pop band, I'm told. Um, I, I'm afraid I don't know about that. Um, how many, um, how much Lego have you got, uh, Grant? How many, how many structures have you got? How many bricks do you think you have? Oh my goodness. Well, I've been collecting for 18 years now and I've probably amassed, I would say just piece count alone, probably somewhere between 100 and 150,000 bricks. Wow. Wow. And how, I mean, has it gone from being a child's toy? I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't like to put a too fine a point on it, but there are some slightly sad middle-aged men who are obsessed with Lego, aren't there, Dave? Don't start. <laughs> but you have a lot of Lego. I have a lot of Lego. It's brilliant. Some of it's actually designed for adults. Right, OK. So, so, I mean, I guess that's the sort of stuff that Grant gets up to as well. I don't, I'm, the question I've got for Grant is, do you actually build stuff from scratch or do you just build kits? Well, I normally build kits more than I build stuff from scratch, but like right here, I don't know if you can see, these are all of my from scratch bricks. So I've got a lot just to build from there. Show us some but, of your Lego uh, there, uh, Grant. If people are watching on Talk TV, I know a lot of people are listening on Talk Radio, but show us show us some of what you've built and just describe it for people who might be listening on the radio. Sure. So one of the builds I have here is the uh, Republic gunship. This one came out, I think, last year. And uh, it's a pretty hefty build. As that's you can pretty see. elaborate. That's, that's, that's huge. It's a big build. Um, ironically, it's actually about half the size of one that I got recently. It's unbuilt in my room, but uh, the Millennium Falcon is the biggest. Oh, so, yes, the Millennium Falcon. I've got a friend a who Star bought Wars that. One. You, you, have, you haven't got a Millennium Falcon? No, a friend of mine bought it, uh, built it, discovered it wouldn't fit on his coffee table, had to buy a new coffee table. Had to buy a new coffee table, yeah. brilliant. Then had to put a glass case over it. Wow, that's then dedication. Reali then realised it obscured the telly, so had to buy a new TV back. It just cost an absolute fortune. <laughs> it was a new chaos. TV. My goodness. I mean, uh, Grant, tell me how, uh, what, what attracted you to Lego. I mean, was it just an organic process? You just started playing with it as a kid and then decided you were kind of a, a, a very, very interested in it and that was a big thing for you? Because there are lots of kits and, you know, we, we sort of imagine people with model trains and so on, but Lego is a phenomenon. Yes, it certainly is. I think I got Legos when I was five years old. My parents, uh, they got me some bricks growing up. And as soon as I got those first bricks on the floor, I just instantly fell in love with the brand. And I kept building from there. Um, I think it's just the fact that you can express your creativity that made me love them so much. It's just everything you could want in a toy brand. And so when I think of Lego, like I feel like that's part of me. I don't consider it like a brand separate. I feel like that's a part of who I am as a person. That's very that's very touching. That's very touching. My goodness, Grant, thank you. Grant Himmler there, Lego, a Lego expert. Dave, wh how much do you think you spent on Lego? I don't think I want to admit that. Well, I, I was out with you, and we were going to see we were going to see a film, and you disappeared for a minute or two. Yes. And we were just going to the Lego shop, and it didn't look as if you spent like a fiver there. It no, like you spent no, uh, perhaps a bit more. Yes, so uh, it, it's sort of usually a bit of a, a splurge, and there are some rather expensive kits like the DeLorean from Back to the Future, which was over one hundred and fifty pounds. Over one hundred and fifty pounds, yeah, and, for the and I haven't built that. And I've got the maybe the... maybe you have, but you have to go forward to the future to find that you've built the DeLorean, but you can't do that because you haven't built the DeLorean yet. Hmm. <laughs> this actually ties back to your tidiness thing because the fun part I always find is sorting out all the bricks into, ah, into right. the piles. So when you go... Do you do it by colour or how do you do it? Uh, colour and, and type of brick. So you have to have a huge table with everything laid out. We're, we're just getting into the realms yes, of, of a deeply, deeply sad person here. Um, <laughs> Dave, I, I'm, I'm joking, I'm joking. You're a wonderful person. And um, thank you for all that you do with uh, Cat of the Week, Rescue uh, Cat of the Week, and being the tech up on this show as well. Dave is, of course, tech up Dave. He usually presses all the buttons at the moment. Uh, John's doing that just at the moment, filling in for Dave because he's in the studio.